Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I'm here with Surface 604 Shred. It's designed in Canada and it is a trail-oriented electric bike with a rear hub motor. In this video I'm going to walk you through all the details and take you on a ride test. For the detailed specs, current pricing, to order online with free shipping in most places in Canada, or to find our contact info to set up an appointment to come try it here in beautiful Ladysmith on Vancouver Island, Canada, you can head to our website at citruscycles.ca. In this video review, I'm going to talk about how they've managed to get this bike to be such an incredible value. That means I'm going to talk about the things I like and maybe some of the uh, trade-offs or things that I would change that Surface 604 had to do in order to get it to this price. So what I'm really excited about is that they've managed to still use high quality components, hydraulic disc brakes, we've got a torque sensor, we've got battery options, a nice display, lots of really great features and still a very attractive price. Now to make that price point of course they have to make some choices. And I'm going to talk about those in the video. Don't take that to be an, uh, you know, real criticism of it, but I just want to be honest uh, with you with the videos. In fact, I should mention I don't get paid to do these video reviews. Obviously, with uh, Citrus Cycles, uh, I make a living by selling pedal assist electric bikes. But it's important to me that you have exactly the bike that you want. So Surface 604 isn't paying me. I can say what I want and I can try to help you find the perfect bike for your needs. So. Who would this bike be for? Well, it is a trailer oriented bike. We do have the CST Patrol 27.5 by 2.8 inch wide tires, the nice aggressive uh, tread pattern on there. We do have a suspension fork, but this is a spring based fork. It does have lockout uh, adjustment and preload adjustment, but it's not an air fork like we'd see on a high end mountain bike. This is a uh, what we call a hard tail. There's no rear suspension just the front suspension so it's definitely trail capable you could go mountain biking with it but when we look at say the fact that they put an elevated stem on here to make it a really comfortable riding position the fact that they go with a hardtail and have an optional rear rack and the mounting hardware so you can either go with their rack or we've got third-party racks that'll work as well and even little things like they've got a kickstand on there which is great this is the standard uh, kickstand as well that mounts on the rear stay so if you need replacements we've got those and uh, the nice thing is that that uh, uh, kickstand isn't going to collide with the pedals should you uh, push your bike backwards or something like that uh, so we've got a light as well, nice and bright, and so that tells you all of those things mean this isn't just for trail riding. They're actually anticipating that you're going to use this for everything. So maybe you're going to use it for getting to work, for just going to school, doing grocery shopping, errands. Maybe you'll go uh, ex adventuring, exploring, touring, and some trail riding as well. So it kind of gives you everything that you would need uh, for doing all of those things without being a real serious, you know, hardcore mountain bike for that you'd want something uh, with uh, full suspension and probably a mid-drive motor as well. And that's one of the things that they've done with this bike is to make it a really good value. They're still using high quality components, but they've gone with a hub motor. This is a Bafong. It's a 500 watt motor. I think it peaks at 750 uh, watts. Of course, in Canada, they are required to be uh, 500 watts or less. And uh, a hub motor, of course, the, the benefit there is it is a lower cost solution than a mid-drive like a Bosch or Shimano motor. And you can check out my other video reviews of other mountain bikes, uh, bikes with the Bosch and Shimano. I love having a mid-drive motor. There's lots of advantages, but of course you've got the advantage of low cost with the uh, hub motor. The disadvantage, well, there's a few. Um, it's going to be harder to change a flat tire because you've got the motor in there. Now, fortunately, Surface 604 has used a quick release uh, on the cables here, so it does make it a little bit easier to uh, remove it. Your weight is not as well uh, balanced. It's a little bit on the rear rather than uh, in the middle and low to the ground, which is just generally what we want. Having said that, though, Surface 604 has moved their battery down low on the frame, so that definitely helps. This is a 10.4 amp hour battery, 500 watt hours, but we can actually upgrade you to a 14 amp hour if you wish, which is going to give you 40% more range. And all the batteries on the Surface 604, including the Bore, the Fat Bike, and the Rook and Colt, which are cruiser bikes, are interchangeable. So that's a really nice feature that they've done as well. So with that uh, hub motor, like I said, the, the balance isn't awesome, but the biggest thing is that motor is turning the wheel. Now, for some people, that's an advantage because they say, look, if I break my chain, uh, that motor is turning the wheel, so I don't need the chain. Uh, I can still use the throttle and get home. Now, yeah, that's true. Um, but honestly, in the years that I've been doing this, 
I've very rarely had a customer break their chain with a mid-drive motor. And if they broke the chain, it wasn't because of the motor. It was because, you know, they didn't do any service, didn't maintain it. The chain was way past stretching point and, and broken. That would have happened on any bike. Uh, so, you know, as long as you're maintaining things, I'm not sure that that's a real argument for it. And in fact, it's kind of a downside because what that means is since the motor is turning the wheel, the riding sensation feels it feels a little bit zippier than with a mid-drive because uh, the rear wheel is pushing you along but really the, the big thing is you know because on your regular bike you're propelling the belt bike by turning the chain and that's what a mid-drive motor would do this is turning the wheel but the big thing here is that when I change gears and this is great because we've got a SRAM X5 uh, on the back here lots of gears pretty good climbing gear um, but when you change gears that is only impacting your pedaling. It has no impact on the motor because the motor is turning the wheel the same circumference. Whereas with a mid-drive motor, you change gears. Now the motor is also an easier gear. It's gonna help you climb hills. So definitely a mid-drive motor is gonna give you more advantage for climbing hills and a little bit more torque. But as you'll see in the video review, I managed to climb hills with this. If I had super steep hills and climbing them all day, definitely I'd wanna invest in mid-drive. But for the price point that we're getting this bike for, that's one of the compromises they make that uh, in most cases work. Now, one of the things they haven't compromised on is that they are using a torque sensor. That's really important. So you can see the torque sensor uh, in the uh, dropouts here. There's a little kind of nub in there right here. And that is actually a strain gauge. So what it's doing is it's uh, measuring the strain on the chain, which is an approximation of how hard you're pedaling. And that's important because a lot of bikes in this price range use what we call a speed sensor or a cadence sensor. And basically what that means is that there's magnets on the chain ring and on the frame. When the magnets pass each other, it tells the motor, oh, they're pedaling. And when they stop passing each other, it tells you that the, it tells the motor that you're not pedaling. It doesn't tell the motor how hard you're pedaling, and honestly, with the cadence sensor or speed sensor, it takes a while for it to figure out your pedaling because those magnets have to pass each other. So the pedals have to turn a fair bit, and that's why they'll put a throttle on most of these uh, bikes with a hub motor, because you need the throttle to help you get started, because you don't get the power right away, especially with the cadence sensor. Now, with the torque sensor that uh, Surface 604 has gone with, that gives you a couple of advantages. It actually knows sooner that you're applying force, and you'll see that in the ride test, because you don't actually have to turn the pedals as far. You get the power pretty quick, and it also knows how hard you're pedaling. The classic story I give for, to illustrate the importance of that is if uh, I, one of the first e-bikes I was riding in Germany many years ago had a cadence sensor. And so I was riding along a river, uh, this is the ocean, but you get the idea, and there was a bridge. I had to go up a bit of an incline and across the bridge and around, I had to go up an incline around a corner and across the bridge. I thought I'd timed it right so that I'd kind of co coast and go around the corner and across the bridge, but I needed more power. I turned the crank arms and of course with the cadence sensor it doesn't know how hard you're pedaling. Gave me full power, I almost ended up in the river. With the torque sensor like this, if I pedal lightly because I need a little bit of power to get up the incline, it gives me just that little bit that I need and no problem, I'm safe. And that's really to me one of the key things is you do want a safe bike and by having a torque sensor you have that safety and you probably wouldn't need the throttle. So if you don't need the throttle you can disconnect it, there is a quick release here. And that's an important point to note because in a lot of jurisdictions, you can't actually ride with a throttle. In Europe, for example, you can't have a throttle. But here in Canada, even in BC, on certain trails now, they're saying, look, you can only have a class one e-bike. And class one e-bikes don't have a throttle and are limited to 32 kilometers an hour. Now, fortunately, we can be limited to 32 kilometers an hour and you can remove the throttle so you're safe on the trails and you're also allowed to ride where uh, any uh, class one e-bike can go. Uh, the reason why you may want the throttle is to make it uh, even easier to start. So uh, again, with a torque sensor, it's pretty easy. Um, or if you simply don't want to pedal at all. Otherwise, yeah, you could take that uh, throttle off and ride just with a torque sensor. Speaking of safety features, we do have hydraulic disc brakes, which are fantastic. These are actually uh, e-bike specific, so you can see there's an extra cable coming out here. That actually is a, a signal to the motor and to the lights, actually uh, in this case, uh, just the motor, that you're braking and so it cuts power to the motor so that uh, if you were using the throttle, you wouldn't accidentally use the throttle and the brakes at the same time the brakes will override that and cut out the uh, assistance. 
Hydraulic brakes are really important, especially on an e-bike, because the bike is going to be heavier, you're going to be going at faster speeds, and so you want to make sure that you can stop safely and reliably. By using hydraulic fluid rather than a cable, the brakes are not generally going to go out of adjustment, uh, the cable isn't going to stretch, it's not going to break, but primarily the big deal is you could actually stop this bike with one finger on each brake lever going down even the steepest hills here in Ladysmith because it's using the hydraulic fluid to stop the bike not the strength and force of your hands pulling a cable so I really like having the uh, hydraulic uh, brakes a nice big uh, rotor on the front here we do have a uh, 180 millimeter rotor uh, again on uh, you know high-end mountain bikes in a you know double or triple the price we're looking at you know 203 millimeter rotors and four piston brakes these are just two but again those are choices they need to make to get to this price point we do have a quick release with a dropout here again on a higher end fork again by two or three times the price you probably see a through axle but th that is uh, very convenient should you need to uh, change a uh, flat so I talked about the uh, suspension fork and the fact that we've got a light. I'll come back up here. We're talking about the brakes. We do have the SRAM uh, drivetrain. This is a push-push system, so you can't pull on this lever if you're used to the Shimano systems. You just push this one to make it easier pedal and this one to make it harder to pedal. We are using locking grips, which is really nice. That's a surprise for a bike in this price range. Usually they'll use ones that you can twist, but there's actually bolts on here that you tighten and that way they can't twist. It's important if you're riding on the trail, you don't want to suddenly lose your balance because the uh, grips are twisting. You still get a bell, which is great because you may be riding the bike on uh, city uh, or paths and you want to uh, let people know that you're coming. Um, let me talk about the, uh, the display and the USB port on there. So the display and controls are the same for all the Surface 604 bikes. To turn it on, we'll just press the power key here for a couple seconds. And you can see it's actually a color display, nice and bright, and uh, you can adjust the angle on it as well as the position on the display if you wish. You can see a battery indicator at the top there. Now I should mention, although it's indicating 100%, this is really just an estimate. It is based on the voltage of the bike. When you get into some of the higher end bikes, say with the Bosch mid-drive, it's actually able to give you a very, very accurate representation of the battery because it is measuring the wattage in and out of the battery. This is actually measuring the voltage. So this isn't super, super accurate, even though you know it says percentage. Uh, as you get to the lower end of things, Keep in mind that if it says 17%, you might not really have 17% left. We do have a nice big indicator of the uh, current speed, which is great, and uh, on the outside, an indication of the power usage. Currently, you can see I'm on level one, and over here we see the odometer on the bike, so it's a brand new bike and the uh, trip distance as well. And uh, so to adjust the levels of assistance, I've got the plus and the minus here. If I press the plus, you can see I can go up to level two, three, four, and all the way up to five, and back down to one or zero, which allows you to ride the bike and still power the lights and the display, your trip computer and everything like that, but no assistance from the motor. Now, if I wish to cycle through the information on the screen here, I can press the I button and you'll see now it gives me the maximum speed over here on the right. Press it again, there's my average speed, again the trip time, and back to the odometer. Now if I want to reset my trip time, uh, trip counter there on the uh, left here, then I can press and hold the plus and minus together. So if I do that, you'll see it goes into the uh, programming menu. And here I've got the uh, display settings, so if I go ahead and click on the I on that, that's going to get me into the display settings menu. So now that I'm in the display settings menu, I can use the up and down buttons to cycle through the information and the I to select it. So if I wanted to change the units from metric to imperial, I just press the I button and then use the up and down to change back and forth and the I button to select it. I can change the brightness on the display, uh, how quickly the bike uh, falls asleep, whether or not the uh, state of charge, in other words, uh, kind of an estimate of what's left in your battery, is a percentage or the actual voltage. And uh, I'll leave it at percentage, press the I to go back. But here's why I started coming in here, is I want to be able to go into the uh, trip reset, so I can go down to that, uh, press the I button, choose yes, and press the I button again, and now it's reset. Uh, if I wanted to, I can set a password for the uh, bike, and uh, that would mean that you'll have to put that uh, four-digit pin in in order to power the bike on. Of course, somebody could still uh, pedal your bike away, but the assistance uh, won't kick in until you uh, put the password in. Uh, I don't believe we have a way of recovering that, so if you put that in, you'll want to make sure that you write it down somewhere. And uh, just timed out of the uh, display settings there. Let me go back into it. 
and uh, I wouldn't recommend changing the AL sensitivity or definitely you don't want to change the voltage. When we're done in here we hit the back button and we can go back. While we're in here I'll show you there's also the advanced settings uh, screen where we can go in here and uh, make some adjustments. Uh, you don't want to change generally your wheel speed. Uh, here in Canada we are limited to 32 kilometers an hour is the maximum cutoff speed before the assistance has to stop. Uh, you could change that. Uh, we can come in and look at the battery info. So this is going to show you some inf in inf interesting information that uh, actually it's not populating right now. Let's see if we can see any data here. Nothing. It's a brand new battery so we may need to uh, have a few charge cycles on it before we're actually going to see any of these uh, stats. So we'll go back. Uh, and if there are any error codes, you'd be able to uh, check those in here as well. We don't have any error codes, of course, because it is a brand new bike. There hasn't been any errors. Back to the main menu and exit back to the main screen. I do have a separate button for the uh, lights here. So if I press and hold that, you'll see uh, the main screen dims a little bit. That's something I don't love because I ride with my lights on all the time. Now there is an indicator here that your lights are on and we've got a very bright uh, front light. And we've got a very bright rear light as well on this model, which is the uh, Rook. Uh, not all the Surface 604 models come with a rear light, uh, but this uh, does control both the front and rear lights if you have them. As I mentioned, the display does dim a little bit when you turn the light on. It's presuming that when you're turning the light on, it's because you're riding at night and you don't want to be blinded by your display and make it harder to see uh, ahead of you, so they kind of dim that. Um, I'd prefer that that was your choice because, like I said, I do ride with my lights on all the time. To turn the lights off, you can press and hold the light button again and you can see it goes back to full brightness. So we have a full-size USB port on the side here that we can use for charging. It's nice because this cover completely seals it from uh, uh, the weather and there is a tether on it so if you take that out it's not going to fall off, you're not going to lose it. And you can just plug a regular size uh, USB cable in there if you wish to uh, charge your phone. And all of the Surface 604 bikes do have a walk mode enabled as well. So if I uh, press and hold the minus button here, and let me just get the bike off the kickstand, that's going to activate walk mode. You can see a display on the little display there. I'll do that again. Uh, you'll notice a little walk symbol will uh, appear. There we go. And the bike will move along at a 4 or 5 km an hour pace. So all you have to do is steer the bike. You don't have to worry about uh, pushing it up a steep hill, for example. Or uh, if you ride on the ferry, they don't like if you ride off the ferry ramp. So if you've got uh, you know, a lot of gear on your bike or whatever, and you're in a pedestrian area or some other situation where you don't want to ride it, that walk mode means all you have to do is steer. You don't have to push it. So we have a interesting saddle. Actually, it's moderately comfortable. Uh, there's some gel. A lot of times on a mountain bike, they'll put a really very active oriented, very stiff saddle. This one's still relatively narrow, which is good on a mountain bike, but there is some gel in here. It's a quality Sele Royale, which is nice to see. We've got a quick release on the uh, seat post, of course, which is something you would want to be able to uh, adjust the uh, height, especially since we don't have a dropper post. Again, that's something that's seen a very high-end, uh, more expensive mountain bike. Uh, we could add one for you. Those are easy things to add, and it's nice that the choices they've made to bring the price down are things that you can easily change later on. So these CST Patrol tires, very good tires, uh, nice uh, 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 pattern on the uh, grip here, um, but uh, you know they're not a high-end uh, Schwalbe or something like that. Again, those are easy uh, things to change. So, uh, oh, speaking of things to change, I like the Welgo pedals. A lot of times I complain about the pedals that come with bikes. These have uh, a nice platform pedal with pins. So really, it's a great value. The fact that you can upgrade the battery is nice. The fact that you've got the torque sensor, which is going to keep you safe, the hydraulic disc brakes, uh, nice wide tires, comfortable riding position, the ability to add a rack, all of those things combined, uh, the fact that you can get service and parts readily through Surface 604, you're not having to get stuff from, from China, makes it a really good value. I'll take you on a ride test, but if you have questions, uh, you need uh, further information, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. Okay, so I'll start the ride test of the uh, Surface 604 Shred on pavement. Now it is uh, designed to be like a mountain bike, but certainly Surface 604 recognizes that a lot of people are going to use their mountain bikes for everything, commuting, grocery shopping, running errands, uh, touring, and so they're not always going to be on uh, trails. And so to that end, it's actually a, quite a comfortable bike. We do have a 
bit of an elevated stem, so I'm not really leaning forward, bent over as much as I would be on a lot of mountain bikes. It's quite comfort oriented. I'm riding on level three right now, about 28 kilometers an hour. Pretty easy to get up to that speed. The wider tires are gonna be a little bit slower. I've got them running fairly low pressure right now because in a few minutes I'm gonna be hitting the trail. But if you're mostly riding on uh, pavement, then uh, you know there would be a benefit to getting the uh, air pressure up a little bit. Roll a little bit quicker. So at that stop there, I did notice, you know, with the torque sensor, I'm getting the power pretty quick right from the beginning. Didn't have to use the throttle at all to get going like you would have to do sometimes on a bike with a um, cadence sensor. Good braking power, both front and rear, of course, with those hydraulic brakes. Okay, I've got a bit of a hill here, so let's move it up to five. Don't notice a big jump between the uh, levels of assistance. No problems on the hill there. If you're coming from Shimano uh, shifters where you can uh, push or pull to uh, get yourself to a harder gear, shift up. Uh, it'll take a little bit of getting used to because with this ram it's a push on both levers. You can't pull on the second one. Now lots of uh, gearing so I was able to uh, pedal past 40 kilometers an hour going down that hill. A lot of times on a mountain bike, they'll really focus on the climbing gear and you'll find that on flats and on downhill sections, you're kind of spinning too quickly, but they've uh, geared this, again, kind of recognizing that you're not always gonna be mountain biking. You might want to go a little bit quicker when you're on the pavement. As you can see from the video here, I've got a fair number of potholes, broken pavement. I'll be turning into onto some gravel here in a moment. And that suspension fork, but despite it being a spring fork, is actually doing quite well, helping to smooth out the ride. I would probably add a suspension C post myself if I were riding on a lot of bumps, bumpy roads on this bike, that'll definitely help. But so far, you know, I'm not feeling like I need to um, avoid all the potholes. Although I should have thrown some fenders on <laughs> for the ride test. The bike doesn't include any. Most mountain bikes don't, but it's certainly something that we could add for you. I'll just do a quick stop here on the gravel. No problem. Some loose gravel on the side here. I'll kind of do some windy riding and these tires are doing a really good job gripping into the soft stuff here no problem nice and wide this 2.8 inch tires give you lots and lots of grip duck onto a bit of a trail here and i'll take you on a, another trail and some hills in a few minutes some loose gravel in there and the tires just roll over no problems It's nice having the torque sensor when you do get into the trails and you can really make sure that the bike isn't giving you too much power if you get into a technical or difficult section and you accidentally turn the pedals, you're only going to get the power related to the force you're putting on them. Pop the curb here. Every now and then you'll hear the kickstand a little bit. It's nice having a kickstand. Again, you know, if you are using this for commuting or errands, having that is really handy. Just keep in mind that it's there. If you get into really rough off-road riding conditions and doing jumps, you may want to remove the kickstand. But this isn't really a bike for doing tons and tons of jumps. 
Okay, I've got a couple of hills coming up here. I'm going to put it up to five for the hill. You should see if the GPS is working correctly, the uh, gradient in the bottom right hand corner. The speed probably won't be accurate because it's going to measure the speed based on the uh, horizontal distance, not the actual distance that I'm uh, climbing. So no problem on that hill. The next hill is quite steep. The gradient exceeds 20%. Oh, look at that. Even though it's a mountain bike, they do give you a bell, which is handy. Easy to see the display. It's nice having the light. Again, a lot of mountain bikes don't have lights built in. It's nice having one so that uh, if you're using it for other things you can see, or if you're riding at night. And we don't have a tail light, so I have a light on my helmet. All right, we're in five for the hill. shift to an easier gear. Of course, that's not helping the motor at all. It's just helping making it easier for me to pedal. And I'm down to eight or nine kilometers an hour. I'm not having to work at it too hard, but I am noticing a difference, you know, with the hub motor here compared to a mid drive. I feel like this hill is a little bit more work than say some of my bikes with the Bosch. It's completely doable. I'm just putting a little bit more effort into it. It's going a little bit slower than what I would find with some of the Bosch or Shimano mid-drive motors. But I made it no problem. I'll continue. And there's a place where the torque sensor isn't quite as sensitive again as a mid-drive with bottom bracket towards sensor. This is a strain gauge. So I didn't get the, when I tried starting on a bit of a hill there, I didn't get the power immediately. So I'm going to put the throttle on now and see if I can do this bit of a hill with the throttle. So when you start on a hill like that, if you're not getting the power immediately like you would on a mid drive, there was slight delay there. If that's going to be a problem, well, you could always use the throttle to uh, get going, which a lot of people do, but you don't need the throttle you do get the power, it's just a little bit slower to come than what I'm used to. So again, I'm being overly critical because I'm used to riding much more expensive bikes with mid drives. And obviously it's not going to compare to a bike twice or three times the price, but it's still very usable. So I managed to use the throttle the whole way here up this uh, bit of a hill. No problem. Another bit of a hill to stop on. So I'll kind of give it a push and there's the power. So it's, you know, fairly quick. Shifting is actually yeah, fairly smooth with a SRAM. Uh, I think that's a X3 perhaps or X5 on the back. Okay, we'll pop onto a bit of a trail. This is uh, not a mountain bike trail, so I'll keep my speed down and watch for pedestrians. And now that I'm on the trail, I'm going to move my assistance level down to two. Now, there's no dropper post. That's something you could definitely add. 
Again, that helps them to keep the price down and uh, you know, it's not full suspension, so it's not designed to go crazy difficult trails, although you could if you wanted to, but certainly having a dropper post and the uh, suspension could be helpful. Hello. Nice solid brakes. I'm on a bit of a hill here with some loose material underneath between the brakes and the tires are gripping in quite well. You want to have that confidence knowing you're going to be able to stay on your bike and stop when you need to. Certainly having those 2.8 inch wide tires is nice for that. The bike overall is handling really well. I don't feel uh, you know, unstable at all or out of control. This is a really tricky section here. I've got a big steep cliff on my right. <laughs> And uh, so I don't want to lose control and end up down way down there in the creek. It's nice knowing those brakes were digging in when I needed them. Good traction from the uh, tires as well. So um, it's definitely, as you can see, very trail capable, even though it's something that you could also use for uh, commuting during the week. All right, heading on to some very loose coarse gravel. That's where nice wide tires like this help you float. You're not sinking in, digging in and making it difficult to control the bike. You know, I can even kind of swerve in here and I'm doing just fine. Lots of traction and control. All right, so hopefully that give you gives you a sense of what you can do with the uh, Surface 604 Shred. If you have any questions, you want to come try it out yourself, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca.